Welcome back, everybody, to the Tennessee Titans franchise here on Madden 23. Today, we are kicking off the offseason, and we'll be going over free agency. With season number one in the books, we went 9-8, and eight, unfortunately missing out on the postseason. Last episode, I did a full season recap. I talked about the roster. I talked about some moves we could possibly look to make in the offseason. So if you want a preview of the offseason, essentially, then I'll leave a card at the top right of your screen so you can check that episode out. As I said earlier, today we're going to be covering free agency along with some of the other stuff, such as coaching changes around the league, the re-signing players phase, trades, and all that stuff. Next episode, I'll be doing a full NFL Draft preview, and then the following episode will be the 2023 NFL Draft, probably the most anticipated episode of the series so far, which is going to be a lot of fun. The Buffalo Bills ended up beating the Green Bay Packers in the Super Bowl 28-10. Even though the Bills finished as a seventh seed, they made it all the way and won their first championship. In the last episode, we talked about some of the underclassmen who have just entered the draft. So again, if you missed that episode, card is at the top right of your screen, as I said earlier, so you can check it out. So let's hop into the offseason here. Let's finally get a real opportunity to turn this roster into our own, because for the most part, these are the baseline titans. I do want to point out that we have five players on defense who went up in development trade. Caleb Farley is now a superstar. Elijah Molden now has star. Harold Landry now has superstar. That's a big one. He's going to get some of those superstar abilities, which is huge for pass rushers. Kevin Byard now has superstar X Factor. And perhaps most surprising of all, Christian Fulton has superstar, which is funny because he just got star development off of a breakout challenge from the Pro Bowl in the last episode. And the ironic thing is that he wasn't even a Pro Bowler. So he has gone from normal to superstar within the span of about two weeks, which is pretty wild. Also, Randy Bullock went up in dev trade as well. He now has star, which is very well deserved considering he was the best kicker in all of football this season. So it's good to see some of our guys going up in development trade. Those guys are all still going to be on the roster this season, but I can't say the same for some of the other players on our team. There were three head coaches fired this season in the NFL with Pete Carroll losing his job in Seattle, Arthur Smith getting fired from Atlanta after going 7-10. and 10. That was sort of a surprise to me. And then the kneecap biting Dan Campbell is out in Detroit. The Lions won their first game of the season and did not win after that. So looking at the replacements, Seattle will be hiring Pep Hamilton, the offensive coordinator from the Texans. I know the Texans offense isn't superb, but Hamilton's done a great job in developing young quarterbacks in the recent years. Wink Martindale, the defensive coordinator of the Giants, is now the head coach in Atlanta. And then D'Amico Ryans, the defensive coordinator of the 49ers, is now running the show for the Detroit Lions. So those are the three new head coaches entering the NFL. As for us, we'll be making a change as well. Offensive coordinator Chris Roberts has been fired, or I guess we can technically say this is Todd Downing, who is the offensive coordinator in real life for the Titans. I know Titans fans don't really like Todd Downing, so congratulations, he's been fired, but we kind of do need some changes on the offense. I think the playbook felt kind of stagnant throughout the season. There are some interesting candidates. Mike Vrabel and Dan Campbell are both here, although neither of them are offense-oriented guys. So we're going to hire Douglas Matthews, who runs the Packers offensive playbook. We'll say his real-life equivalent is Jason Vrabel, who is the Packers wide receivers coach and passing game coordinator. He also worked uh, with a number of other teams throughout his career. And no, he is surprisingly not related to Mike Vrabel in any way. They just happen to have the same last name, although they spell it differently. So Douglas Matthews or our real-life version, Jason Vrabel, will now be our offensive coordinator. We are now in the re-sign players phase of the offseason, and that includes all of the player retirements in which we have two. Starting center Ben Jones is calling it a career, along with our launch snapper Morgan Cox. We knew we were eventually going to have to replace Jones, so I guess we're going to have to do it now. As for Cox, he wasn't going to be the replacement, but I guess we're going to need a new launch snapper as well. And then checking out some of the other retirements around the league, we've got Deshaun Jackson, Devin McCourty, Dwayne Brown, Joe Flacco, Trent Williams is a surprise, he's still on the top of his game, Jason Kelsey, Melvin Ingram, Cole Beasley, Matt Ryan is done after one season in Indy, J.J. Watt, A.J. Green, Julio Jones, Tom Brady, 
retires from the Bucs, so maybe Giselle wants to get back with him after all. Emmanuel Sanders, Kyle Lawn, Jason Peters, Josh Norman, really big list here. Jimmy Graham, Adrian Peterson, Titan legend. So there we go, a lot of big time retirements, a number of Hall of Famers coming from that group as we now enter the re-sign players phase. We re-signed offensive guard Nate Davis right at the end of the season, but other than that, everybody who needed a contract extension throughout the season is still here, and we do have a number of starters who are looking for new deals. We've got a lot of the guys on big contracts, which is one of the main reasons why I chose this team, because we were really going to have to bend around the cap. So we're going to have to be smart with how we spend our money. We start with David Lawn, who had a great season for us this season. He was super consistent. He only had three games without a tackle for loss. He's not asking for much money, but the problem is he doesn't really want to come back. I've offered him some deals throughout the season. He said no. So what we're going to do is we're going to offer him the player, the super player-friendly deal, but only for two years, total of $8 million. And he, to my surprise, said yes. So David Lawn is going to be back for the next two years. Him and Zach Cunningham will return in the middle of of the defense. Other than that, I didn't have many other main priorities. OJ Howard, I don't think I'm going to bring back. Amani Hooker was an interesting one. I figured I would offer him a cheap deal. He says no. I don't really want to sign him to a long-term contract, and the franchise tag is pretty pricey. We are going to re-sign Brett Kern, so he'll be back as the punter. And then Odell Beckham here at the bottom is an interesting one because he wants a lot of money. And quite frankly, I'm not willing to pay him that. I think Beckham was good for us this season, but I don't want to sign him to more than a one-year deal. The franchise tag is around $20 million. And with Odell's ego, you really think he's going to want to play on the franchise tag? I don't think so. The only depth player we re-signed was Olukanmi Adenye. He's a decent young pass rusher who can compete for snaps for pretty cheap. But other than that, we're going to let everybody else walk, and we won't use the franchise tag. I'm not opposed to bringing guys back like Odell Beckham or Amani Hooker or O.J. Howard based on their interest through free agency, but we're going to let those guys hit the open market. So as we now enter free agency, let's take a first look at the class, and it's not super star heavy. Levante David at the top is really good. But outside of that, there aren't many super elite players, but there are a lot of good, young, talented players who are looking for second contracts who I do think could be pretty interesting. So we do need to clear up some cap space because we don't have a lot of money to spend and there are a lot of guys in free agency who I would like. Obviously, Ryan Tannehill at the top is the obvious move. We benched him for Malik Willis. However, he is still a good player. He's the 15th ranked starting quarterback in the NFL. There will be teams interested in acquiring Ryan Tannehill. I know when he got traded to Tennessee originally, it didn't cost that much. I believe a fourth round draft pick. But his contract is not a long-term deal. And he's been good since he was traded to the Titans. Wasn't phenomenal this year, but he wasn't horrible. So apparently everybody has green interest in him. Now, obviously he wouldn't start for a lot of these teams, but I found four teams who I think would make a lot of sense for Ryan Tannehill. The first two sort of go together, that being the Panthers and the Commanders. Both of these teams made the playoffs this past season. They both let their starting quarterbacks from last year walk, and they have young guys in Matt Corral and Sam Howell who could start, but I imagine they'd rather someone better. The Colts just lost Matt Ryan. They're going to be desperate, but I don't think we should trade him to a division rival. But the team that really makes the most sense is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Tom Brady just retired. They have no quarterbacks on their roster, and they still have a win-now team. I think they would prefer a guy like Ryan Tannehill over any of the options in free agency or a rookie because Ryan Tannehill is a veteran proven quarterback, and I think we can get something for him. I don't think he's a completely negative asset. I think this is a pretty fair trade. Ryan Tannehill and a 7th rounder to the Bucs for a 5th rounder and a 2nd rounder next year. The Bucs were pretty disappointing this season. They have a high 2nd, so I think it's fair that we get their pick next year. So Ryan Tannehill is a buck, and Malik Willis is now the unquestioned starting quarterback of the future. We now have 2 seconds next year, along with an additional 5th rounder this year. Although we take on a $9 million cap penalty, we have now freed up close to $30 million with that move. We're going to free up a little bit more money by sending Des Fitzpatrick to the Cardinals for a 7th round pick, making up for the 7th rounder we lost in the Tannehill trade with the Bucks. So now we have over $46 million to spend. In Stage 1 of free agency, we can offer up to 5 players, and I plan on using all 5 of my offers because it would be pointless not to. 
I think this team's biggest need is explosiveness in the passing game because we really lacked that last season. And I think Nicole Hardman from the Kansas City Chiefs would be perfect. He's one of the fastest players in the league. This is a kid who can make defenders miss with the ball in his hands. He's a super explosive player after the catch, and I think he's exactly what this offense needs. Robert Woods and Traylon Burks are good players, but they do not have the explosiveness that a guy like Nicole Hardman does. Our passing game was not explosive in the slightest. There was no vertical presence downfield, and getting a true deep threat like Miko Hardman would be perfect for this team. Miko Hardman had a breakout season last year with the Chiefs, getting career highs in catches, yards, and touchdowns, and now he will be paid accordingly by the Tennessee Titans if we're able to get him. I'm going to offer him a two-year deal for $20 million, 12 million total salary, that's six per season, and then a $8 million bonus for per season. So we're giving him around $10 million a year. Eric McCoy, the center from the Saints, will be our next offer. With Ben Jones gone, we need a new center pretty badly, and Eric McCoy is a really good option. He is not garnering much interest in free agency right now because everybody and their mama is offering J.C. Treader, who is a little bit better, but he's also quite a bit older. So why not go after McCoy, who's six years younger and will be a much better long-term piece? I don't like to offer super long-term contracts, but I think a two-year deal would be fair for McCoy up until his age 28 season for around $15 million. This one might be a long shot, but it's worth a try. Elton Jenkins from the Packers is one of the best young offensive linemen in the NFL. He's currently the sixth ranked right tackle in football, but I don't view him as a right tackle. I view him as just an offensive lineman in general because he can play anywhere, and he has played pretty much every offensive line position in the NFL. He can play center. He can play guard. He can play tackle. His positional flexibility is so important, so to have a guy who can play all over the offensive line is going to be really, really nice. Now, he's going to cost a lot of money, so we're going to offer him a two-year deal for $40 million. That's 20 per season. I know it's a lot, but I think it's worth it to get an A-tier level offensive lineman in Elton Jenkins. With OJ Howard gone, we need a new starting tight end. I think giving Irv Smith a short one-year prove-it deal could make a lot of sense. Irv Smith was a pretty high draft pick a few years ago by the Minnesota Vikings, and he just hasn't really panned out, although he did have his best season in 2022, and we're hoping he can keep that up for his this upcoming season if we're able to sign him. This is an athletic tight end who can stretch the field and, again, should give our passing game some much-needed explosiveness. So I don't want to give him more than one year. I'm willing to do one year around $5 million. I think that's pretty fair. Of course, we are letting Amani Hooker go. I wanted to see the talent in terms of safeties in the free agency class, and there's a lot of good ones. Chauncey Gardner-Johnson and Jabril Peppers at the top, but they're asking for a lot of money. Why not go a little bit cheaper with a guy like Juan Thornhill from the Kansas City Chiefs? He was a second rounder a few years ago out of the University of Virginia, and I really like his skill set for our defense. Although he's more of a traditional free safety, he'll probably play strong safety for us where Imani Hooker played last year. However, I think Juan Thornhill's skill set is really versatile. I think he can play a number of positions on defense. I think he can play both safety spots. I think he can line him in the nickel or even outside a corner. Hell, you could probably give him some snaps at sub linebacker. Again, I'm only willing to do a one-year deal for him, so we're going to offer one year for around $5 million. So those are going to be our five offers for Stage 1, really focusing on on offense, particularly offensive line and pass catchers, which I think are the two biggest weaknesses on the team currently. So we're going to simulate the week. Hopefully we get lucky and can get some of these guys to accept their contracts. And well, we didn't do too bad, but it could have gone better. So the good news is that Eric McCoy has accepted his contract. He will now be the starting center of the Tennessee Titans for the next two seasons. Irv Smith declined. He ended up signing with the Miami Dolphins on a more expensive two-year contract. And then the other three guys are still available in free agency. Jenkins and Hardman are now starting to get a lot of interest, and I don't think we can afford both players. So I'm going to have to choose between them. And ultimately, I think I'm going to choose Miko Hardman. So we're going to withdraw the offer for Elton Jenkins and give more money to Miko Hardman. If we look at our offensive line, yes, Elton Jenkins would be an upgrade, but I don't think he's a total necessity. I'm willing to give Nick Petit-Friere another shot at right tackle, although Jenkins wouldn't have replaced him. 
he would have replaced Taylor Lewan. Had I signed Elton Jenkins, I would have cut or traded Taylor Lewan, who's making $14 million this season with zero cap penalty. So instead, we won't be getting Jenkins, and we'll just keep Taylor Lewan for another season. As for me, Cole Hardman, we're going to up the offer. He's my number one target in all the free agency, so we're going to offer him a two-year deal for $23 million, upping the salary by a million and a half per season to our original offer to hopefully pass the Houston Texans and land him. Along with Hardman and Thornhill, we're able to offer eight additional players in this stage. We're going to go after Foster Moreau from the Raiders. I think he's a good player. He's just kind of stuck behind Darren Waller. Maybe he can be the tight end. Nick Scott will be our number three safety. Cleveland Furl will vie for pass rush snaps, and we've had success with Furl in the Eagles franchise last year. We're looking for depth on the defensive line, along with the offensive line. And then we need a backup quarterback, so I'm going to offer Geno Smith. I think he's a good backup for Malik Willis, who's a young, erratic player, whereas Geno Smith is a little bit more consistent, doesn't have as many big plays, but he could be a really good mentor to Malik Willis. He does have the mentor tag, which I think will be good. So everybody ended up accepting other than Rasheem Green. So Nicole Hardman and Juan Thornhill are now here, along with everybody else who we offered. So I've got to say, I think free agency has been pretty successful. We're actually going to take our offer off of Rasheem Green. I think I'm going to use that money on multiple players instead of one. We're going to add some additional money by trading Tyree Gillespie to the Chiefs for a fifth round selection. The Chiefs lost their starting three safety, Juan Thornhill, who signed with us. So now we're going to get an asset for one of our backup safeties from the Chiefs. Work smarter, not harder, folks. So with that, we now have a pick in every round this year, other than round five, in which we have four fifth rounders. So we have 10 picks total as of now entering the NFL draft. And obviously that is subject to change. We're going to offer Raheem Mostert a short deal. I want another explosive back in the backfield. The only running backs on the roster currently are Derrick Henry and Hassan Haskins. And then we're looking for some offensive line depth with Michael Jordan and Jake Hansen. This is the stage of the offseason where we go over fifth-year options. And it would be for the 2020 first-rounders for this year. The Titans' first rounder that season was Isaiah Wilson. In order to make it to year five of your NFL career, you got to play more than four NFL snaps. And Isaiah Wilson can't say that. So the two offensive linemen we offered, Jake Hansen and Michael Jordan, accepted. Raheem Mostert did not, so he will remain in free agency going into the preseason, and we'll have an option on if we want to sign him based on if we draft any running backs this year. So we got three legitimate starters with Hardman, McCoy, and Thornhill, and we got a lot of good depth pieces. Overall, I think this free agency was a success. We accomplished, for the most part, what I was hoping for. Around the league, the Eagles spent a lot of money signing the three best free agents, Levante David, Mike Gusecki, and former Titan Odell Beckham Jr. Jalen Hurts has a lot of new weapons, but they may not stick with Jalen Hurts. They are linked to Oklahoma quarterback Masaru Lee in the draft. Some of the other highlights include Yannick Ngakwe going to the Texans. He had 19 and a half sacks last year at the Colts and will remain in our division. The only team Ngakwe hasn't played for in the AFC South is us. Chauncey Gardner-Johnson to the Niners. Juju Smith-Schuster to get some long-term deal with Atlanta. Tony Pollard and Alexander Madison signed with the Dolphins. I think that'll be a really good pairing of players. I think their skill sets really mesh. Amani Hooker signs a long deal with the Chicago Bears, so he is officially gone. And then going down the board even further, the Colts were very active. The Panthers re-signed Baker Mayfield to a long-term contract. Jack Fox is a Bronco. I'm going to cry myself to sleep tonight. The Jaguars were quiet. They signed Bo Melton from us whereas the Texans and Colts were busy. The Colts have a new starting quarterback. It's Jimmy Garoppolo on a one-year deal. That's like the most Colts thing ever. So what? Is this like the sixth straight year they've had like a bridge quarterback starting for them? That's really depressing. And the funny thing is I could totally see the Colts signing Jimmy G next year. Some of the other quarterback changes include Carson Wentz to the Giants, Jared Goff to the Steelers, Tyler Huntley to Atlanta, uh, the Lions signed Teddy Bridgewater. The Steelers signed Jared Goff. He'll, I guess, give Kenny Pickett a little pressure to perform better. Let's talk about some trades around the rest of the NFL now. The Colts don't need Isaiah Rodgers because they just signed Sean Murphy Bunting, so he'll go to the Patriots. The Eagles don't need Quez Watkins anymore because they signed OBJ. He's going to the Chargers, although I thought about putting him with the Dolphins with Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddell. That would be the fastest receiving core in the history of the league. 
Your third gross Matos is headed to the New England Patriots for a fourth round selection. So the Patriots are busy adding Isaiah Rodgers and now Yuter Gross Matos. AJ Dillon in a fourth is going to the Bills for Zach Moss in a third. So the two Super Bowl teams from last year are making a deal with each other. And then the final trade of the day, Devin Duvernay is going to the Minnesota Vikings. And there's a reason why the Vikings are making this move for Devin Duvernay. They need an extra receiver because they may be losing one whom they already have on their roster. Superstar wide receiver Justin Jefferson has requested a trade from the Minnesota Vikings. He's played there for three years, so his contract is nearing a close. If you look at his motivations, the team does not have a franchise quarterback, the team does not have a history of winning, and it's not a warm weather state. And plus, the Vikings were pretty bad last year, so that's like all the reasons in the world for him to want out. Justin Jefferson will not be traded today. The Vikings want to hold on to their premier asset as long as they can, but he may be traded during draft night in what could be a major blockbuster for whoever ends up acquiring him. So that's pretty much going to wrap it up. I think overall we had a really successful free agency. We were able to get value for quarterback Ryan Tannehill. We were able to re-sign some key players, and we brought in some new starters. Miko Hardman, Juan Thornhill, and Eric McCoy will all be huge additions to the roster, in my opinion. I think we got younger. I think we got better. And we added more draft capital, which that's like the trifecta, right? So next episode, we'll be doing our full NFL Draft preview. We'll be going over every position in depth one more time. We'll be going over mock drafts. I'll make my own mock draft. And then the following episode, which will hopefully be up this Sunday, will be the 2023 NFL Draft. If you guys have been around the channel for a while, you guys know I put a ton of work into my draft episodes. And this one's going to be even more special since we had the NCAA Next Up series linked with it. We're really going to know the stories of all of these players who get drafted into the NFL. So that's going to wrap up the episode. Hope everybody enjoyed. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new. Peace out. Tighten up.